The mower deck off a of John Deere 318 and see that wheel is nice over there. When you get to this wheel, she got a little out of whack there. So it looks like there's a piece still attached here. And then you can see it's still attached back here. But it's twisted and down, so I need to be able to twist it up and bend the bottom back in. See if we can get it somewhere in the place it's supposed to be. What I think I'm going to do is take this pin out. I don't know if I can get the wheel out or not. I might have to bend a little bit before I get the wheel out. So let me get a big crescent wrench maybe to put up here and maybe a little hammer or something. Okay, let's see. How hard this is going to be. Go ahead. I need to see if you can come up at the same time. Okay. 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 So what I'm going to do is there's a crack right here, I'm going to just weld it from underneath and try to stitch a little bit on the side right here and that will get that part established and then I'll try to pry this over it will get it a little more square and weld it up through here and then flip this over and weld everything solid I think will be okay. So here's what we end up with, I welded that together down through here and across and around here and then I got this welded and this is what was cracked over here so I tried to weld that up a little bit and I also welded all the insides of it so that's one there as good as it ever was it says I'm about sharpening the blades but it's starting to crack it's time to replace the blades now these are for a 50 inch mower deck and you kind of measure a blade diagonal and it's 17 and 3 16 or something I don't remember now. It's a little over 17 if you got a 50 inch deck. These blades are also supposed to be hardened. <clears throat> Still pretty much a low lift blade. I didn't see no replacement high lift blades for it but... Now on these motor decks sometimes these um, pulleys are hard to get off of there. So I'm going to loosen them up and get some penetrator oil in there and let them set for a little bit. Alright, so I took the blade off. You just take one nut out of the middle. And um, I got the blade off of there and I started to turn these out. They're usually carriage bolts. If you look down here, someone's replacing with regular bolts. So we're going to have to get a wrench on there. And um, <clears throat> hold the tops of them, I guess. Now, just in case you don't remember, it it goes pretty easy. But in case you don't remember the bell routing, take a picture or something of that first. Now, this whole assembly is still stuck in the deck. I can't get it to come loose after taking the three bolts out. Um, I can pick them up, so I know it's not none of them. What I'm going to do is take. I got this soft headed hammer. I'm going to hit it. You could take a piece of wood or an old blade or something put on there if you had to to smack on it. You don't want to ding this all up. But And that little spot on the bottom where the blade, see where that sticks down? You definitely don't want to be hitting that part of the hammer. Not a metal hammer. And I gave us the shot of penetrating oil under there. I was going to try to get underneath there in between the pulley in the bearing and see if I could drive something in there but I just can't get in there so if you notice how they got this big metal center hub and then this weld right here I'm gonna to try to get a chisel in there and smack down on that a little bit and I got the nut on it enough but I got this on a wooden block too like I say you just don't want to hit out here and bend this pulley all up I'm going to try to hold it up here. If this doesn't work, then maybe I'll try to heat this shaft a little bit where this goes through. Keep rotating it and hitting it in different places. It 
guess I'm hoping it's gonna be the hardest part of the job. Now I do got a crack coming, so it is moving. That's good. It's starting to worry me. Somebody has a better way of getting this off. Please let me know. Now you can really see that that's walking. See the how raised up that little gap is. This little gap right here is what I'm talking about. Where are you at? That's the bottom of the pulley. It was down tight. So we are moving off there. I'm just going to get rid of the pulley. I mean the nut. All together. And I'm on that wood so I think I'll be fine. And it's moving now too. So. See, it's setting down on the pulley now, so we're making it come off. But there it is. I see on this pulley, what I'm hitting is this welded ring back here. You don't want to be hitting out here where you're going to damage the pulley. So we got the pulley off. And set that down. Next thing we're going to do is get this keyway out of there. And what I do is just take a little chisel. It's probably a Woodruff key, I think it is. If you can get underneath of it, see it's starting to pick up. If you have to, and you damage it, you can file it down some to get the burrs off, or you can buy these at a penny hardware store. I just need a way to hold it. And there she goes, under the motor deck. Now it looks like that's a three-quarter inch woodruff key. And measuring it like this, it kind of looks to me like it's a three-sixteenths by three-quarter woodruff key. What it's looking like to me. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have to put this down in the press. <clears throat> and I'd probably put the nut back on it to start with. And then we'll press this shaft down out of there. You can't press the shaft out until you get that woodruff key out of there. See here, it'll bind up in the bearing. Okay. Put my penny back on there. Start going down. I can get it. That one's stuck a little harder, huh? Let me go get my socket. There's a nut. I better put the nut over here in a safe place. See, I like that copper penny thing because it doesn't crush threads and stuff so easy. Don't know if anybody else ever does that. Okay, so we're going to put the socket on there. And we're going to push it out like we did the other one. I think the bearings on the other side have been changed one time before. Okay, there's the 
that and my socket somewhere. There's my socket. And there's the shaft. Start the nut back on it so we can't lose it. Okay, so now we're back getting that snap ring out of there. I'm going to give it a little blast. side maybe. Just trying to get back there, trying to get it out of the groove a little bit. It's coming out of the groove. If I can get under it. You can get it out of the groove, pushed in, and get up under it like that. It'll come out. It don't give you a whole lot to hook to. that out of there. We need to get some of the bearings out. And again, take something in there and push that piece off to the side. This one's being difficult. Get a hit. Got it moved over a little bit. I thought. Yeah, I got it over far enough that I can get a hit on it. Are you still with me? And there's that spacer. We cannot forget to put the spacer in. in one of the old bearings. And that one there you can definitely tell is bad. Now we should be able to just put this over and do the same thing. Make sure you're hitting on the bearing and not that clip inside. Remember that second clip. So there's that bearing out of there. Yeah, I'd say that other one's been rebuilt at one time. I need to get my socket. I do, I do, I do. So, seeing as how we got the opportunity to hit on the outside of this one, that's what we'll do with our 32 millimeter socket again. It's all the way in, and that groove, we did clean that groove out, let's make sure we got it all out, I didn't get it all out of there. I 
think of the piece of paper towel that was in there. So now we'll get our ring. Make sure that's clean. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Get that ring started on one side and come over here and you can push it a little bit at first to get it going in there and then just cut back here where it's out of it and just start pushing it down in. It's hard at first, but then it gets easier. Just don't jab yourself with a screwdriver. I've done that before. Being in a hurry. Start over. Okay, got it in there. And we want to push. Once you get it started in there just a little ways, it goes pump <clears throat> some of it goes back in that groove. It makes it a lot easier. Like right there, see how it went down in there? <clears throat> now we want to tap tap the groove for the ring just to make sure it's in there good. Alrighty. Now we can put the shaft in there. Remember, clean this groove out. Now, I was going to use my Scotch Bright, but I don't have it there. So I got just a little bit of 220 sandpaper because all we want to do is just clean the crap off of it. We're not trying to get it. We just want to get any old grease and stuff off. Just makes that shaft slide through there so much easier. Like I say, if you had a socket long enough to put down that this would go down in, you could make it so you hit on that bearing on the inside, but they seem to go in easy enough that actually I'm just going to take a Need you to grease on my finger. Just help that shaft go in there. Get your soft hammer or something. Just don't beat this ring up. Just tappity tappity tappy. Don't go getting too carried away. Now here, again, I'm just going to put some grease in there. I mean, it's women around in there, and it gets a little bit warm, so it'll grease itself, sort of. I just don't want to. I don't want moisture to get in there and rust on that shaft and then the next time you gotta to try to take it apart that's what you got a bunch of rust and you can't get nothing apart um... where did I put that spacer? don't forget that spacer I put these together before didn't put the spacer in. I don't know what I done with the spacer. Oh, I know what I did with the spacer. Give it a wipe. Make sure that's in there. 
Now we need the other bearing. See, it's not really going that hard. You don't want to drive the crap out of these bearings. If it's not going, you got to figure out why. It's going to go that far. Them sockets got a ridge in the inside. I don't want to come down on them threads and booger them up. Now we're going to go down until it changes noise. Hear that how it changed noise and you hear that hollow wood like sound? So that one's in. So the next thing I want to do is get our little woodroof key in. I want to make sure I get all that crap out of there. Get all the dirt out of here and make your life easier. Much easier. This one's pretty clean too. And then the woodruff key. Remember if you make any burrs, file them down. That'll make your life easier too. If you get a burr on there, um, you get a burr on it, then the pulley don't want to go on. Now you want to get that on there good so the pulley will go on. Let's get our never sees out here. Just a little bit of never sees will really help if you ever take part of next time. You don't have to go you know, crazy with it. Just a little coating will do. Now we need a pulley. We need a pulley. Line this up. And get her started on there. Like that one went on there all by by hand. Put the nut on there. And like I say, I'm going to look and make sure I know this one because I marked it. I know which way it goes. The other one I'm 99% sure, but I'll look back on my video footage and see, make sure. Um, like I say, I want to get some new um, carriage bolts for here. And then when I get these put in there, I'll hold the blade and tighten this nut down. So I went over and got some carriage bolts to put in there. 5 16 by inch and a half. And if they stick down too much, I'll just cut them off. Now that side I got in there just finger tight. And this side here, I'd put a blue mark there. And blue marks there, which means it goes this way. And that would put this weird tab facing this wheel over here. Is that the way they originally came? I don't know. Does it matter? I'm not sure. I know some mower decks, not John Deere per se, but I've ran into shims under some of them and all, so does that mean anything that one side's cut off or these got a degree taper or anything on them? I don't know. I'm just putting them back the way they was, I guess. Now these do stick out, and I might just take the grinder and snap them off the top. Just so there's less stuff to grab grass and stick to it. It's just a 5 8 socket. So it's an inch and 1 8 socket. I'll run them down at the impact. I ain't gonna bury them super tight, but I don't want to keep them snug. Okay, there we got it all back together. Remember the belt comes around here, then loops back around here and straight in the back. So I've got that bolt. That bolt in the middle there, and the one back over here, all tight. I just got to put these three quarter inch ones on there, and then it's ready to go. 
Now these sides are like this and that flat side. In the pictures I took, it was back here on this hole. I just put some grease in there to help it from rusting. I know it's going to collect dirt, but better than rusting. 